right, we're back on the Z80 computer project. And as you can see what I last time showed in computer graphic has materialized into physical form. So this is the case. It's relatively large, so I wanted to give myself a bit of room. And I also already have mounted a transformer and a heatsink on here. This currently uh, holds a 7805 TO3 mount, um, mounted voltage regulator, but I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to use it like that or something else, since I haven't really thought about how to build a power supply. But I put a larger transformer in here. The transformer I used before was a little anemic. Uh, this is a three and a half amp transformer. Also, I put some tape on here because the previous owner of this transformer uh, has kindly written his name on there. And I uh, didn't really want to show that on camera. But yeah, that is the case. And the front panel that you have seen in the last video fits on here like this. And then I probably also have another panel here with switches and uh, stuff like that. So this is probably not going to be the final version of this. I'm probably going to have more output stuff down here somewhere. But um, I'm not entirely sure about that yet. But for the main event of this video, in my card edge connectors have arrived. They look like this. They have 56 connectors, I think. Yeah, these are 56 pin connectors. And they're really sturdy. And if I put a piece of circuit board material in there, they really grab it and hold it fairly tight. So this is perfect. And I bought these in through hole mounted in the through hole mounted configuration. You could also get these with solder lugs, but I want to have a big back plane. It's talked about in the last video. So these will fit that nicely. One issue with these is I showed the kind of circuit board blank I wanted to use in the last video. These, these are relatively small. And I thought these would fit in here, but they don't. They are just a little too small. And I mean, I could still do this, uh, just slot them in like this, and then have six less pins, which I really don't need these six pins, but it is not, it's not a tidy solution. And you could always slot in the card the wrong way around or whatever. Um, it's not good. I don't like it. So I ordered some more PCB material. I ordered some different PCB material blanks. And they are much larger. So I have to cut off a little bit of the side of these. But they will give me much more... Um, room to put circuits on but if I turn this around you can see uh, what the problem is the problem is I ordered the wrong ones I ordered single-sided when I should have ordered double-sided so I put in a replacement order and now I'm waiting for the double-sided variety to arrive but yeah these I can still use these because these are just the right size to make an excellent uh, backplane sort of thing and yeah, these would sit in nicely down here. Focus again. And then you could have the power supply on a smaller board like this down here. And then connect it all up. But that would work out quite neatly. Yeah. So this is that. Since I went to the larger cards, I obviously also had to change out my etching device. Because these would just about fit in here. But I'd really, I'd like to have some more room on those. So you couldn't fit them in. 
this way. Although, um, I'll turn this around so it doesn't flick as much. Um, you could still do it like this. But then you could only use half the card, which is a bit pointless. I'd really like to make the final cards rectangular. So this connector here is 150 millimeters side to side, and I also like to make them 150 millimeters long. And I'll come to why I want to do that later, after I talk about the etching device. So in the last video I showed this etching device which fits this lunchbox here. But the problem is, if I wanted to go to a larger PCB, I couldn't fit it really in that holder, so I upgraded this slightly to fit a larger box. And this is now, this is quite large. You can see, and I just redesigned that holder to accommodate the larger box. It's just stretched a little, but it's basically the same design. And then I also put some holes on there so I could fit some springs that, if we pull these closed and keep it in there. So, but if we remove this, which you can still quite easily remove it, this would now fit these boards relatively well. Even if I wanted to use the full size, I could put them in there. But I probably don't want to do that. I probably want to have them be rectangular. So 150 millimeters long, which is a little less than what this is long, and then 150 millimeters wide. And why I want to do this has something to do with the method I want to use to actually get the PCBs coated in um, photoresist. So I use toner transfer toner transfer before but it doesn't really give me that great results and I wanted for a while to upgrade to some sort of photoresist process and there is this dry film photoresist that you basically you peel one off one side and then you sort of press it down and get the air bubbles out and then you heat it up and then you pull off the other thing and then it doesn't stick and you rip half of it off and by the time you have it on there it's already um, it's already halfway exposed because you can't work in complete darkness and it's just in my experience it's been a huge mess so I don't know if the wet type photoresist is any better but I ordered some and if I find that this gives me good results, I'll probably, at first, I'll just dilute it down and put it on there with some sort of sponge or, or something like that. But if it works out and gives me decent enough results, then I'd like to eventually just spin coat it on. And for spin coating, it would be a little easier if I had a rectangular board, because it would be easier to spin that up and I wouldn't need as much uh, as big of a spin coater. Obviously, ideally, I would use round PCBs, but that gives me a whole range of other problems. So rectangular it will probably be if that is what I go for in the end. Yeah. So this is the current state of the project. The next things I want to do are probably get the whole photoresist thing set up and see if I can get a process that works well with double-sided PCBs. Wait for the double-sided PCB blanks, obviously. And with the photoresist, what I wanted to do is basically print out the pattern, uh, just call it the, basically the circuit layout, the board layout, and put it on here and have some sort of marker so I can align both sides, uh, tape them on here, print it on transparency, and then expose them with uh, some sort of UV irradiation chamber that I still have to come up with. But uh, I'll be sure to put some updates on here on how that is going. So, yeah, that is the state of the project right now. I'm still waiting for some parts. 
Also, since the hex decoders work really well, and I've bought another bunch of these uh, chips that go into the decoder boards, I'll probably order some pre-made PCBs so that I can at least populate this uh, while I'm waiting for all the other stuff to come in. And then, yeah, I'll probably start figuring out how this uh, fetch resist business works. And then we can start building the backplane and the cards. And this time I want to do it the the proper way and design the power supply last, after I know all the specifications that need to go into the power supply. Yeah, so that is it for the moment.